Whoever said there's no sense crying over spilled milk obviously never tried Simply Smart from Hood. All the rich taste you love without all the fat, produced without artificial growth hormones. Be strong! <laughs> well, we, we played the Australian Open um, in our day. It was called Koo Young. And it was a very interesting, it was like Koo Young Park. I, I remember, it, it was so interesting, it had a goat right in the parking lot. Every day when you'd park your car, you'd hear, <laughs> you know, you'd hear the goat. And uh, it was always a reminder that, um, you know, you're playing the Australian Open. The other thing I remember about the Australian Open was, were the flies. There was, I mean, they said in tennis that you had three strokes. You had a forehand, a backhand, and then you had the flies, <laughs> you know, because it, they were all over the place. The one year that stands out for me is the year that I, I beat Martina Navratilova in the semifinals, and then Helena Sukova in the finals. And the reason why that stands out is because um, I think that I've, I, I believe I've only beat Martina um, once or twice on grass in my whole career because she just dominated me on grass courts at Wimbledon and and uh, I did beat her at the Australian Open. I think that was the only Australian Open I ever beat her and maybe the second time in my life on grass. So that was a big win for me. When I was playing in the 70s and 80s, um, the crowds were a little more subdued. And But in the last, I think, 10, 15 years, the Australian crowds are very popular as far as the players love playing there. They, they're, they voice their opinion readily. I mean, they, they cheer for you loud and clear, and they get they paint their faces, and they do dances, and you know, they really, um, they are rowdy, and, and, but they're very demonstrative, and they're very supportive of the players. So I think um, it's a, it's, right now, it's one of the more popular Grand Slam tournaments for the players. You know, you can't count out somebody like a Kim Kleisters, because she played the U.S. Open and won the U.S. Open, and the, the wonderful thing about that was, you know, she hadn't played for a few years, and she just had a baby, and she beat both Venus and Serena in the tournament, which was unbelievable. And um, so I would think she'd be practicing. You know, I think she's pr pretty much focusing on only Grand Slams right now, and she's really very, very disciplined and very mature for her age, and I think she knows um, how to train for the big ones. So I, I would say she's got a good shot. I kind of think Djokovic might have a good shot. Again, um, when you look at Roger Federer, he had, a, he had sort of a dream year in that he won, um, he won the French Open and he won Wimbledon. And he really, he did really have a great year. And then he had a ba got married, and he had a baby, and just everything happened to him this year. So I'm not quite sure if he's ready for another big year, or, or if he's going to have a little bit of a letdown. And Nadal has been injured for most of the year, and really has been having a hard time getting back um, his form that when he was number one in the world. So I think Djokovic probably is primed and ready to win a Grand Slam.